reality that we often don't talk about, which is that the mayor uh, exists in a system of government, and there are a lot of other players in that system. And depending on the issue and the situation, the mayor is not necessarily the most powerful person in, in, in the situation. And so in this case, yeah, he's got a lot of things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And we've got the federal justice department breathing down his neck. They've arrested and indicted him. And you've got a governor who could remove him, um, not, not easily, but she's also suggesting there that it's a power that she's aware that she has and she wants to use it as a way to sort of influence the mayor and say, look, yeah. you've, got, you've got to make some changes in your cabinet. And we have seen this strategy that the mayor has employed in, in a hundred different ways in the past few days, which is showing that he's going about his business, trying to, to show that despite his requirement to appear in court, uh, you know, otherwise he's getting the business of the city done. He was at one of his uh, older adult town hall events in Brooklyn last night, and he did talk about his legal trouble briefly in his opening remarks. I did nothing wrong, and it would be proven that I did nothing wrong. I'm strong on that ground, but while the attorneys to handle the case, I'm going to fight for this city. So after <laughs> that in this town hall, and it went on for an hour, none of the residents in Fort Greene in the room asked the mayor any question about the charges or whether he's they still were told not to of governing. I, I wonder your perspective on that, Earl. Does that mean that the, the people in the room uh, were, were friendly to the mayor? Does it mean that uh, the mayor's assertion is correct, that New Yorkers just want the mayor to be the mayor? Well, yeah. I mean, both of those things could be true, by the way. <laughs> Which that, uh, could be, you know, if, if you but it's not. If you had a contractor, you have a plumber come to your house to fix a leak, you're not going to ask him if he's filed his taxes and whether everything's, you know, <laughs> okay with his business. Or when uh, a landlord you, comes. You leak fix, right? So people are asking the mayor to be the mayor. Say the plumber. Um, they, this they is the a taxes. landlord type. They, you know, he took an oath. He's supposed to be doing his job, so I think that's not surprising at all. The, the reality is different people have different roles. Uh, the prosecutor prosecutes, mm -hmm. the journalist asks the questions, <clears throat> the grand jury issued the indictment. You know, we're, we're all yeah. looking at the this. people just watch championships I want to wind back a couple of days to when you published huh? your New York Magazine column this week. And streaming um, shows. One of the things is that there have been some, stop some the labor leaders voters. and political leaders reaching out to Tish James saying, should you come into city politics? and and run for mayor. It's the and the other touch just shit. A broader notion that while Mayor Adams has been an important figure mm. in black political power in She's the city, he might not have so much Trump support that all the Trump. other black political leaders are prepared to uh, to stick their, their their foot out and save him. That is correct. Yeah. There are a lot of other people who have a lot of different aims. You talk to the you know the speaker of the city council, or you talk to say Hakeem Jeffries, who's trying to become speaker of the House of Representatives. You know, a lot of people have a lot one of, of us who know Eric names, and 40 it's years. As if, no, uh, this is the center of the near. universe of black politics, the way it arguably was for David Dinkins a generation ago. And so yeah. I think what he's finding is that people are saying, well, listen, what you're doing, if you're attacking, say, the Biden Harris mm -hmm. administration, saying that you're being unfairly targeted, you're, target, you're targeting Kamala Harris. And we've, we've got an interest in seeing her move oh, forward. We can't have black on black crime. with your in interest politics. in trying oh, to save no. your own hide. Want to switch gears to finish here to the interview you did right with now, the J.P. Morgan Chase CEO, Jamie Dimon. What, what was the, uh, they they what was the reason they were making him available? There, there are a number of different uh, branches, and this was the one in Bedford-Stuyvesant, not far from my house, where they're doing a different kind of community banking, where it's not so much about pushing products or trying to make loans to people, you know, but about, you know, sort of the basic financial literacy, mm -hmm. trying to get better acquainted with the community and so forth. This is a new uh, sort of strategy that they're trying to do uh, to help uplift communities. So there was an opportunity for you to talk about that but uh, you know of course there's some other security. stuff that was on your mind yeah, yeah, here's the uh, the portion of Errol's interview where where he and Jamie Dimon were talking about the, the bigger picture of New York City politics when you see what's going on at, at City Hall how is it affecting business where do you think uh, sort of things are I would I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the mayor or anything like that I would love to see business, business more accepted in New York City I mean, you know, this is what drives everything. And you, you just walk down the street here, you know, it could be small businesses, you know, 30 million small business Americans, big businesses, which, you know, make huge investments, R&D and products. Maybe the public does always know that J.P. Morgan uses 40,000 other businesses to help us. He's uh, personally a billionaire. 
He runs a multi-trillion dollar bank, but here he is in bed and he's sort of an apostle for capitalism. He says we really need yeah. to sort of um, uplift and keep yeah. something special here in New York that we often have. Well, you know, only the trillionaire hanging out in the slums with the fucking They're not the ones threatening to move the headquarters to hold the phone. Oh, no, no, no. He's from Jackson Heights. Oh, you dumb motherfucker. Thank you. I'll also remind you that I also got a new episode of his You Decide podcast out this week. Katie Honan from the city.nyc.